Hi. So this video is going to talk about Aristophanes' play Knights. That's K-N-I-G-H-T-S, not N-I-G-H-T-S. Um, now, according to the introduction in this Bantam Classics edition of the complete plays of Aristophanes, this is a play attacking Cleon. Uh, Cleon rose to power in democratic Athens after Pericles died in 429 BCE. And um, according to the material we have from Aristophanes and from Thucydides, uh, who wrote a history, Cleon was not a great guy. Um, he was uh, a militarist who sort of was outspoken in uh, supporting not necessarily uh, wise military endeavors. Uh, he was a demagogue, that is, he, he rose to power largely by telling the people what they wanted to hear, and then abused his power for his own personal gain, and so on and so on. Um, my sense, and I, I, I'm not a specialist on Cleon uh, by any stretch of the imagination, uh, is that Aristophanes and Thucydides both had personal reasons to dislike uh, Cleon, and so maybe take uh, their descriptions of him with a grain of salt, but the general consensus does seem to be that he wasn't a great guy. So... Knights, in, in principle, is about Cleon, specifically, but I actually think it's a broader critique of democracy in general. Um, and if you've watched my other videos on uh, Acarnians, uh, the birds, and Lysistrata, which should be showing up as links up in the top corner there, you'll know that Aristophanes is not particularly a fan of democracy. He tends to be very critical of it, um, partially along some of the same lines that Plato is critical of democracy in the Republic. This idea that democracy involves people being easily manipulated by being told what they want to hear, and uh, democracy as sort of one step away from tyranny. Uh, that that democracy inevitably gives rise to demagogues who then uh, pervert what should be the, the freedom and self-determination of democratic processes for their own ends. So the play pits uh, these two characters against one another. Uh, there's Paphlagon, who represents... Cleon and the Sausage Man. Uh, the Sausage Man is a sausage seller who gets uh, sort of chosen uh, by Nicias and Demosthenes, where these other two. Uh, so Paphlagon is a servant of a character named Demos, uh, who re represents, in a very direct and obvious way, the people of. Uh, Athens, because demos is the Greek term for uh, the people, or the citizenry, or something like this. Um, and so, Nicias and Demosthenes are uh, these other two servants who are feeling Paphlagon's uh, tyrannical yoke, uh, because Paphlagon is Demos's favorite servant. So, these two find a prophecy that's that they interpret to mean that Paphlagon will be supplanted by someone who sells sausages. Uh, it just so happens that a sausage seller uh, lives just down the street. So they get this guy basically to challenge Paphlagon uh, for superiority. Now, the contest between Paphlagon and the sausage man is basically who can lie the most, who can make the most extravagant promises, who can bribe Demos with the most uh, pleasant gifts. 
And they make no bones about that. Like they're very clear that is what they are doing. Um, so there's a lot of anti-democratic stuff here, and I want to I want to read you a few of these sections. Uh, so this is Demosthenes at the beginning of the play, near the beginning of the play, uh, describing the situation, describing his boss, Demos. Our boss is Demos, farmer born and bred, business addressed the pinks, a chronic grouch, high-tempered, sixty-ish, a trifle deaf, but knows his beans. Last market day he bought a slave, a tanner named of Paphlagon, the biggest rogue and liar hereabouts. He learned in no time what the old man likes. He not only made his boots, but licked them too. He toadied, flattered, wheedled him for fair, and oiled him for, and oiled him up with soothing saddle soap. Just try one case, sir. Here's your fee in full. An early bath and dinner, soup to nuts, and later on a bite of supper, eh? What's more, the tidbits we prepare he steals and gets the credit for. The other day when I'd cooked up a Spartan mess of pylos, the, the scamp slipped by me, grabbed the dish and ran, and brought it to our master as his own. No one's allowed to do a thing but him. Stands with a leather duster while he eats and shoes away political bugaboos. He knows the old boy dotes on oracles and reads them to him till he's pleased as punch, filling him full, him full of lies about us all. And when the beating starts, this Paphlagon goes round amongst the servants, dropping hints that we'd be wise to purchase his protection. You saw the wailing that young Hylas got. You want to live? Then make it worth my while. And we, of course, pay up, for otherwise the boss would kick the stuffing out of us. So right from the beginning, we've got this critique of Deimos, the character, but also democracy, the process, because we've got we've introduced this idea that a demagogue, someone who, again, is willing to flatter, bully, and bribe, can uh, acquire power within this system. Um, we get this continually, this theme continually throughout the play. Uh, so when Demosthenes and Nicias are trying to uh, convince the sausage man to, to challenge Paphlagon, uh, the sausage man says, it have provided for me a better, this is uh, the prophet who, who made the oracle saying that the sausage man would come out on top. Uh, says he'd have, he'd have provided for me better still if he told me how to run the country. And Demosthenes gives him this political advice. Easy enough. Do what you're doing now. Making a hash of things in general, sweetening up the mess to the public taste with a dash of oratorical applesauce. The other requisites you, you are clearly yours. A raucous voice, your cockney to the core, is everything you need for statesmanship. So... Again, this idea of like bribe, flatter, talk a big game, and these are what you need to succeed in a democracy. Uh, these are what you need to acquire power in a democracy. Um, so this is one of the recurring themes. Um, I just wanted to give you one, one more instance of this. Because um, we actually have, uh, at one point, Demos himself saying, yeah, this is how things go, basically. Um, so the chorus says, Ah, Demos, you hold a sway, the fairest on earth today. You speak and mankind obey in sheer trepidation. Yet gullible as a boy, beguiled by a stupid toy, to flattery insincere, you, end, you lend a delighted ear, allowing your mind, I fear, to take a vacation. And Demos replies, You've nothing beneath your hair. You think I'm not all there? It's all that I it's only that I've a flair for living in clover. I love to be bottle fed and cry for my daily bread, so keep me a scallywag and let him collect his swag. And when he has filled his bag, I topple him over. So Demos here is saying basically I accept that I'm being duped, I accept that People are flattering me and they're telling lies to me, but because it's pleasant for me, I allow it to happen. Um, whether or not Demos is actually in control of that situation uh, is a different question. 
So that's one important aspect of the play, is this critique of, of democracy. But as we saw in, um, I think, Akarnian's most prominently uh, of the previous videos I've done, um, this is also tied to the idea of performance. And Aristophanes is a metatheatrical poet. Um, he's very much interested in this idea that um, democracy involves performance, that theater is in some way like democracy. So I want to give you a couple of examples of this. Um, so, so shortly after uh, Demosthenes gives the sausage man the advice, uh, the political advice about uh, his raucous voice and oratorical applesauce, um, the sausage man says, who will support me, eh? The plutocrats are in a funk, the poor are jittery. And Demosthenes says, ah, but a thousand knights, good men and true, despise him. That's Paphlagon slash Cleon. They will back you to the end, and so will every decent man in town. These clever people in the audience, and I and God can all be counted on. Don't be afraid. His likeness isn't good. Our mask designers were so scared of him they wouldn't reproduce the fellow's face, but he'll be known. This public is no fool. So that's an interesting reference, uh, because apparently uh, the, the mask makers for... Uh, the Lanaya, which was the the, uh, the festival at which this play was originally produced, were so worried about Cleon's vengeance that they refused to make Paphlagon's mask look like him. So there's that reference in there. Uh, our mask designers were so scared of him they wouldn't reproduce the fellow's face. But there's also these references to these clever people in the audience, and this public is no fool. So this idea, like clearly Aristophanes is not trying to be subtle here. Like this is very much about, uh, I am attacking Cleon and I want everyone in this audience to know that I'm attacking Cleon. So we've got that sort of, that first meta theatrical moment where Aristophanes is calling attention to the fact that he's using this play in a specific way, that he's using this play for his own political ends. So the other meta-theatrical piece that I want to share with you is this digression in the, about the middle of the play, uh, where the chorus basically just takes some time out to be like, hey everyone, Aristophanes is awesome, and theater audiences are fickle and kind of suck. So I'm going to read you the first part of this, but it's actually a pretty lengthy, uh, like two and a half page digression um, in two different meters. So the first portion goes, Ye folk in whose heart there is love for the arts, who never refuse to solicit the muse attend. We digress in a thoughtful address in a pestic. If any old timer, some comedy rhymer whose verses undoubtedly bore you, had hopefully thought we could ever be b brought to deliver his speeches before you, his wager upon it we wouldn't have done it, but this is a poet worth hearing. His hates are the same as our own, his aim is the truth and frankness un unfearing. He'll meet undismayed typhoons, tornadoes from any direction appearing. Now numerous people are coming to see him inquiring in puzzled confusion, why still he delays to acknowledge his plays and prefers to remain in seclusion. He wants to reply to this query, and I've agreed to endeavor to do it. It isn't stupidity, no, nor timidity, here is what forces him to it. Fun well does he, full well does he know that staging a show is a business harder than any. Our muse is a miss who, lavish, who lavished her kisses on merely a few among many. And you, one finds, have annual minds, you grow fresh whims every summer, first greeting with cheers, then treating to jeers the works of a veteran mummer. And then it goes on, uh, and it talks about several, three specific comic poets 
who uh, originally were much beloved of audiences and then uh, audiences turned on them. And then it ends this, this choral section uh, by saying, come raise a salute for our poet and root for the goal of your famous regatta, and this is a naval metaphor, that cheered by the thrill of late Lanaian goodwill, he may merit the prize and depart with the light of success in his eyes and a brow that is brightly resplendent. So basically, there's this lengthy digression in the middle of this play uh, where Aristophanes has the chorus essentially say, Aristophanes is a great comic poet. You should all appreciate his work. You should not be fickle and turn on him the way you've turned on these other poets. And you should all endorse him to win uh, the prize. Because originally, um, uh, originally drama in Athens was presented as a competition. Almost everything <laughs> in ancient Greece was a competition. Uh, they loved competing over everything. But um, originally, you uh, dramatists, poets, would present a number of plays at specific dramatic festivals, uh, the city Dionysia and the Linnaea, and uh, they would be judged by a panel of judges drawn from the different uh, tribes of Athens, and then whoever won would be honored uh, for winning that. And so Aristophanes is basically here taking time out of the plot of this play to say, wouldn't it be great to give Aristophanes the prize? So again, we've got, I talked about this in the video on Acarnians as well, but we've got these, these sort of central themes that Aristophanes keeps coming back to. And Metatheatricality is one of them. Hey, Aristophanes is a great playwright is another one of them. But also this skepticism about democracy that we saw in the first half of this video is another component of Aristophanes' style.